Welcome everyone to a new cemetery tour. Today I'm coming to you from the Forest Hill Cemetery, a place I've done two videos on in the past, and I'm back for a third time due to viewer request. Many of you have stated you'd like to see a full walking tour of the sprawling cemetery, and today's the day we're gonna do it. I have a lot of ground to cover. I'm gonna do my best to cover all the roads, pathways, and locations that the cemetery does have. Now this is obviously gonna be a longer video, but this is gonna be especially for those of you who like to maybe walk on a treadmill and watch some videos or want something peaceful, relaxing, and calming to watch before going to bed. This will especially be useful to watch and listen to at those times. If that's not one of you, then I hope you still stay tuned and continue watching. And what we're gonna do is just walk around. I'm gonna take the roadways. I think there's a couple pathways. I'm gonna show you what there is to see, highlight some areas, share a little bit of commentary, and just do my best to cover the whole grounds here. So I ask you to sit back, relax, grab your favorite drink or snack, if you're not on a treadmill, and to come along with me for a walking tour of the 1870 Forest Hill Cemetery. Now I did have plans originally to do this video back over the summer. And there was a couple of times I came close to driving here and doing it. But I decided to wait until the fall, and one of the rainy reasons is due to the foliage that has changed. There are still some trees that do have some color, others are bare, but we'll be able to see a lot more as well because one thing I love about the cemetery is that there's a lot of areas that are overgrown and have like a forgotten, abandoned look to it. And those are some of the things I want to highlight with you, and this is the best time of year to see them. We'll see throughout a lot of different unique tombstones, headstones, there's benches, statues, a few mausoleums or uh, vaults. But we are here though, just uh, first part of November, we're just before November 10th and it's about 11 a.m. in the morning. There's a slight breeze, about 50 degrees at the moment supposed to be a high of 60 today and it's going to be a gorgeous morning early afternoon to do a walk in the cemetery Now, off to our left, there is a school over there where kids do have recess. So you may hear some screaming children. It's not ghosts or anything like that. It is actual people. But we're gonna come across many forks in the road, just like this one here. Some of them do loop around to each other. Others go off in different directions. So I think what I'm planning on is walking to the farthest opposite end, which is near the entrance. And from there, we will, uh, take a loop somewhere, come back in a different direction towards this way. And in between, there's gonna be some crossroads, uh, some pathways. Truly, I can't show and walk every inch of this place. It would take nearly all day. But what I'm gonna do is, you know, focus on some of the best areas and at least go from end to end so that you see how big it is. Off to our left here, we're gonna be coming across one of our first overgrown areas. Some dead trees here that give it kind of that spooky feel that you would see like in a haunted cemetery. We'll just go in here just a bit, just to give you a better look. Looks like this might be a family plot here. This individual is John Pierce, born February 8th, 
1826 died June possibly 21st 1903 it looks like 3 or 8 these ones are unique you can see they look like chunks of logs with the bark on them Another family plot here. Looks like the latest one passed away. 1997, Esther. Center screen is Nettleton with a nice statue. The face is weathered, so the detail's not there, but overall in good condition though. I'm not going to stop too often just because it's going to end up slowing the progress. I do, it's hard to imagine how big this is. So I want to keep moving as much as possible, but I don't want to bypass anything that is worthwhile to focus on either. So it's going to be a combination of both. And I'll also give you some quiet moments as well, where I'm just going to walk and you'll hear the natural environment. This one here has a flower bed in the front of it. George Scott Kingsbury, born in Tawanda, Pennsylvania, 1830, died in Scranton, March, 1903. And this is labeled as Briar Hill, Section L. If you're on the Find a Grave website, those markings make it very shouldn't say very, but much easier to locate sections of the cemetery if you're looking for a particular family member or burial. Now, as mentioned, this was established in 1870, and a few of the founding members are laid to rest here, specifically somewhere in this area. I remember speaking to the caretaker in my first video who told me some uh, more details about the cemetery. Over there, there was uh, some horse hitches where they used to type the horses when they were arrive on horse and buggy or horse and carriage. One of the personal mausoleums here. But like usual, if you wish to see my previous tours, which was the first tour ever I'd done here, where I spoke to the caretaker, got a lot of details, shared as much history as I could, as well as my return visit, which was last winter when it was snow covered, you'll find those linked down below in the description. When you click down below, if you don't see them, there should be a little tab that says read more or show more. Just click that and everything will be there. Looks like that is section F on that tree there. And these go down kind of like a ravine. Up there is personal residences, but there are some headstones I can see right at the edge of the taller trees in the background there. Another really overgrown area. And one thing I like to make note in case this is your first time seeing the cemetery is that the reason these are overgrown like this, it's not intentional. It's just that they haven't gotten to it yet. So either there's no family members around to come take care of it, of their family members plots or areas, or the grounds crew just hasn't gotten to it yet. There is a really small grounds crew that is responsible for the upkeep of the cemetery. They basically work on it sections at a time. And when they get to a section, other sections are being overgrown. And that's why it looks like it does. So. I think it looks really neat. It's a whole different vibe and look to it compared to like a really neat, pristine, well manicured cemetery. This one has a lot more character and feelings to it, if that makes sense. Even to show too, I don't want to go too far back because it looks like it's kind of muddy. I'm going to zoom in just a second to show you. All the way back there, there are some headstones too, some little ones. This is like a little, looks like a 
partially dried up creek bed right here where overflow water comes through. But yeah, there's all headstones back there up to the fence line, which is the school property. This right side here is mostly natural area. I don't think there's anything down there to check out. But over here, everything's covered in some freshly fallen leaves. And some really gargantuan trees here too. That one still has a lot of color on it. Puppy. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Typically, I do a lot of photos in my videos, specifically cemeteries. This is a say, very photogenic cemetery. It's one of my favorite ones to come to for, for photography. But for this video, I'm going to keep it pretty much just primarily video. Uh, me capture one or two snapshots but for the most part we're going to have this primarily video if you would like to see something more dedicated to photos feel free to let me know in the comments i could always return again and focus more on still photos look at that color right there actually i'm going to capture that photo right there that just presented itself with the colors and the Beam of light showing on it with the sunshine. Couldn't pass that one up. So <laughs> I went against my ward a little bit. <clears throat> All right, so for the next little bit of area, I'm gonna try my best to keep quiet because sometimes I don't know when to, when to close my mouth. And we're gonna hear a weed whacker starting up as one of the grounds crew is doing some trimming. But uh, I'll let you take in just the natural environment and the sights that I see.
What I think I'm going to do, since we hear the children getting louder and louder, instead of staying close to the edge of the property, I'm going to take this road up here, which is going to bring us a little bit further away from the screaming noise, and should direct us towards the veterans area, where there is a nice little area there with the, the cannon flagpole and some other things to see. So we'll head there next. This is an area I featured and focused on in my second return when everything was covered in snow. And now we get to see how it looks without snow cover. Just gonna take a moment here to give a moment of silence for all those who sacrificed and are laid at rest here. Just left the veterans area there and this is section C, which is one of the farthest areas opposite where we started our video. This does go in a circle, but also we can go down a different road to get down near the main entrance, which is something I want to share with you as well. This one here, Sayers, Douglas R. Marie K. Douglas passed in 1967, Marie 1987, 20 years apart. And they were born one year apart, 1905-1906. Walker has a nice little area here. It's like they did a nice job putting the little border fence around it. The white stone, flowers. And that's for Dennis. Beloved son, father, and brother, Dennis. Well, this is relatively new. He was born March 1970 and passed in 2020. Uh, this one says 1972, died in 1997. That's for Derek. So Dennis and Derek laid side by side here. Nicely done. Von Stork has that giant statue where whatever you want to call that, tombstone, headstone, statue, centerpiece. Lon Stork is a prominent name in Northeast Pennsylvania, the Scranton area. Okay, so if we were to continue going this way, it would take us back to where we veered right because of the children's playgrounds over there, the recess area. This will also lead over there, but we're gonna come up here and make a right. Just to show briefly, there are 
some more overgrown areas, but nothing that really stands out as something I need to get over there and focus on as far as any statues or famous names, stuff like that, that I'm aware of anyways. So we're going to bypass that just because of the noise. And we're going to go down this way. There are some residences there in their backyards. Go right up to the back of the cemetery. Which makes for a quiet neighbor. You know, no one's going to build here, so not going to have anyone ever disturbing you. At least you hope. We are going down a little hill now. It's a sweeping curve, as is the landscape here is going down a hill as well. Ooh! I actually just spotted something I've never seen before. It's all the way in the back there. It looks like a sphere or a globe. That is one of the more unique ones I've ever seen. And I'm seeing it for the first time, so let's go check it out. Do a little detour here. And then we'll get back on the road. You can actually see a depression here. At least I could. The ground sunken in. That may be where the ground subsided, where the casket collapsed, if it wasn't put inside a vault. There's actually more of them here too, I'm seeing depressions, so depending on when they were laid to rest, they may not have been having their casket in a concrete vault. Cosgrove. So yeah, the one right here kind of being hugged by the trees is something I've never seen before as far as a headstone. This one is Rain. R-A-I-N-E. Charles Rain, 1848 to 1908. And that Isabel Rain, 1846 to 1908. Wow, so they're born two years apart, died the same year, maybe even together. But that is really neat. Just to show my hand for, you know, size scale, that's probably solid granite. And it's a perfect sphere with a, like a belt or band going around it. I'm going to try to capture a photo of that because that one does stand apart from the rest. So if we were to look around here, this does keep going down. The entrance is down there, but we're going to take the roadway down just so it's an easier path. But yeah, we spotted something new for the first time, so that was pretty neat. This seems like some older burials here, possibly. Some of the first ones, maybe. Do my best to be respectful. Obviously, I do have to walk across certain areas, but groundskeepers do have to come through as well to trim, maintain. So it's inevitable you have to step on certain areas, but I try to just make it minimal and not leave any imperfections or depressions. We're going to go up here, get right back to the road. Oh, that's a nice looking tree there too. It's almost like a burgundy color. I actually use that as part of our pathway here. The one thing I can ask is that if you are enjoying any part of this video so far, enjoying the sights, the sounds, the commentary, anything at all, it'd be greatly appreciated if you leave one of these before you exit the video. It would mean a lot. That's not a haunted bush. That's a squirrel trying to be sneaky.
Got another hauntingly beautiful tree here covered in vines, which looks like it overtook it. The tree, I think, is probably dead now. So to put things into perspective, we were walking up on the other side of there. That's where all the screaming demons are. And now we're getting down here closer to the caretaker's home and the main entrance, which we're gonna give you a uh, peek at once we get closer. This is a nice, beautiful stretch here. You could tell that, you know, during the summer months, this would all be green and lush and would make a nice tree, shady canopy from the trees. Right now, the road is just littered in all the fallen leaves. There's another one here. It's like a family plot of Sealy, S-E-E-L-E-Y. -E -E W.M. Henry, maybe William Henry. Mary. Another Mary. Edward. There's Bright. Cooper Jones. That sounds like a name from like a Western movie. Sheriff Cooper Jones upholding the law. All right, so now we're coming to the main, I guess you want to call it thoroughfare, uh, junction. So the road going off to our left is going to be the main entrance where you can come in and out, which bypasses the caretaker's home. And I got to watch out for vehicles here. So yeah, right down there you see a couple vehicles at the caretaker's home. They do live in there and maintain this glorious cemetery. But I brought you down here to show you this, which is the one of the best things here at the cemetery, which is the holding vault. I learned from the caretaker and from viewers as well is that this is used or was used for the winter burials. When the ground was too frozen to dig into, they would keep the caskets, the bodies in here, just ugh, specifically in the basement, which has like catacombs. I did uh, have pictures in my first video here where I was able to get a quick glimpse on the inside through a, a crack in the door. Somebody left a jack o' lantern. And the upstairs here is like a type of chapel. It does have, I believe, some stained glass windows, if I'm not mistaken. And the neat thing is there's a lowering device on this floor where they place the casket and lowers down into the basement. And from there, they could insert it in one of the catacombs. But yeah, this is a really neat building. I tried getting access to come in here, but unfortunately, was well, not granted. I think it's due to safety reasons. But a lot of times you'll see this is completely covered in vines, almost invisible here, but they did a really great job recently of clearing it back up and it makes for some good photo opportunities, which I'm gonna capitalize on right now, so. Let's do that. All right, so as I mentioned, this is like a thoroughfare junction area. We came down there. That'll bring us back up to the area we were walking. So we're gonna stay down here and continue along this road and go to the far opposite end. But as you can imagine, there are areas in between with roads and paths that will take you to different areas, but we're gonna Kind of stick to the, the main routes, which would be a bit easier to navigate. That one's kind of unique too. That is Grams, G-R-A-M-B-S. It's a little, almost like a spire. We are unfortunately going to have to walk past the groundskeeper running the weed whacker up here, the weed trimmer. So that will be a bit noisy. So I'll do my best to kind of just keep moving right past it. If it's too loud, 
during editing, I'll just cut this part out. But if you're seeing this, hearing this, then I'm gonna just keep, keep the video rolling and go right through. So we came down there before and we went this way. So we're going to have to backtrack a little bit the way we came and then it'll give us some other options as to where we could go from there. Hi. The other thing I just remembered too that this cemetery has is not one but two really incredible stone culverts large enough that we could walk through and I have uh, explored them shown them in the first video but I will definitely give you a glimpse of them today they are pretty incredible with their construction So the best way to describe this is that it's almost like two cemeteries in one, although that's not true. It is one big cemetery, but this road that we're walking on is basically the main artery. So where we just came from, as you saw, there's a lot of different roads, different turns, different sections, and they're all kind of up there. Along here, this is one road that goes across this part, but then up here, it's almost a repeat of the side we just came from where there's different roads different sections different pathways so it's two sprawled out areas connected by one main artery that's the best way to describe it oh, our puppy dog friends coming again I stay for a walk. Sure. <laughs> All right, so if I'm not mistaken, we did come down that way. That's Briar Hill right there. This is section J. Now we still have to go back there, which we will do in just a little bit. But we're going to take the road less traveled on the left here. I think this area, yeah, has a lot of colorful flowers here and decorations. Oh, they even made it kind of spooky. They got some flowers with eyeballs in them. Look at that. I absolutely love when people do that. I found one here on my first video. We'll try to locate it where they had something similar. They had like ghosts. They had um, like witches and gargoyles all around the headstone. 
just kind of making it extra spooky, even though it's already in a cemetery. So it's like a play on the whole superstition thing that, you know, cemeteries are haunted. But you could tell that the family has a great sense of humor and probably a lot of fun to be with or around and when they were living. Okay, so right here, got some hidden areas with a little pumpkin with a smiley face on it. But what we're going to be going across here is one of two culverts. And I'm going to try to get some access to show you because they are pretty incredible. Let's try this over here. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. You can tell that it looks, almost, almost looks cave-like. And that's just a culvert for the road to go over. Give me another angle over here. Yeah, and I walked through those. I'm not going to do it today because it's kind of damp down there, but if you want to see what they look like in greater detail, the first video will have them covered. And I just have to take a quick second to admire some nature's carpet right along the road. Okay, so we're going to continue up this way. And as I'm walking around, things are kind of coming back to me as far as items I want to show you guys that I just remembered are still here. There is a personal mausoleum that was damaged and broken into, and you can actually almost get a glimpse on the inside to see where the casket is and the statue on the inside. It's kind of eerie, kind of creepy, but cool at the same time because it's something you don't typically get to see. Remember, I brought Alan and RJ here, and they couldn't believe it too. And they're like, wow, like that's like, what a sight. Okay, so this goes up and around. There's nothing off to the left here. Off to the right, there are burials, and that's the direction we're headed to. I'm going to head up this way and take you to that mausoleum. Oh, there's a nice statue here I want to show you first. That's a good photo right there. The photographer and me just can't help myself but to take some photos, so keeping it minimalistic. This is a neat area, really overgrown, has that forgotten feel to it. And hiding behind some of the shrubbery there, you could tell is the mausoleum. As mentioned, it is sealed up. They cinder blocked it up because one of the caretakers explained to me that kids broke into a number of years ago and did some pretty bad damage, which is really unfortunate. But on the side here, if it's still possible, the stained glass is broken and you can actually see in there. So what I'm going to do, right now you guys are mounted on my gimbal. I'm going to turn the gimbal off, detach the camera or the phone, and do my best to stick you guys in there without dropping you because if I get it in there, I won't get it back and you'll never see this video. 
So give me a moment. I'm going to try to get situated and give you a glimpse as to what is inside there. All right, I have you guys in there as far as I could get safely in there. You do see a statue, it looks like a woman there with her head down. And there is one of the open crypts and the casket is right there. Get in a little further. So it's unfortunate that people broke in and caused damage and they had to seal it up permanently. But yeah, I couldn't help but to uh, share this with you guys. It's not something you get to see pretty much ever. Okay, so we're back out. Hopefully you appreciated that look. Something that many people may have been curious about as to what it's like in there. That's the closest we're gonna get to it. So now we need to make our way out of here up to the road and continue on with our tour. But just to take a second to spin around and show you this whole area here has a completely forgotten abandoned look to it. Really great for photo opportunities too. There is another mausoleum here, but this one is in better condition, not broken into. This one is Hughes. And the one thing I love about this one is the doors. I believe those are copper. I had to adjust the exposure there. I think these are copper doors. Had that patina on it. And the oxidation. Look at that tree there. Well, you guessed it, another photo opportunity. That color is so vibrant. Hopefully it's coming through on camera. So I think I came a perfect time of year because we've got a mixture of completely bare trees where all the leaves are already gone. Some in the distance, which are still holding onto their green color. And then you have that right there, so. We're getting to see a nice variety of colors and different stages of the fall season, winter season approaching. All right, we're gonna continue along here. Off of the distance, there are some three, not some three, there are three big spires or towers. One says Connell on the left, middle one says Matthew, Matthews, and the third one is more. There also is another one up here too. I remember the caretaker mentioned to me that they, uh, that it got damaged. They had to kind of put it back and it was upside down. Now look at this little tree here too. This is actually a beautiful little setting right here. Davis, that is stunning. They have a little tree here. This one, I don't even know what kind of tree this is too. This is really different. It's like really feathery. Nice color on it, but it's not too big. It reminds me of like a bonsai tree almost with the shape of the trunk. And I never noticed it before because it was just a green tree when I was here in the past or it was covered in snow. But now I could see it and that's a really beautiful looking tree. Now, if this is not a prominent family plot, I don't know what it is. Winton. That's a huge, massive block. And let's see who we have here. We have Walter Winton Jr., 1903 to 1919. So, 16 years old only. Walter Winton. Oh, so this is uh, junior and probably senior. This is 1845, 1919. Mary. 1865 to 1924. I'm sorry if I mispronounce this. Aretas, 1838 to 1896. Alice, 1841-1913. Helen, 
1881 to 1848, and a few more up there. This is a huge family. And they go off in the distance there to the edge of the property. How you doing? Good, how are you? And this one over here is the one I was mentioning that is... Now this doesn't look too good. Hang on. Let me uh, assess the situation here. Okay, yes, this is it. So this one, I was told this one got knocked over, I think, by vandals. And they got placed upside down. So that looks like a Wilson shunt. And when they replaced it, it's upside down. And of course the head broke off, unfortunately, from the fall. But yeah, so I guess it was just so heavy, they just put it back up, didn't realize it. And now it's just a, the way it's gonna be. Another one back here too has a type of tree trunk. I don't know what that is on top. But yeah, it's, like a little stone base, and that's placed on top like a tree trunk, base of a tree. Is that a bird? Oh, it's like a dove or something. Just noticed that as well. And as we're up here, while we're up here, I'll show you this one, which is labeled with the letter H. And you can see it's, um, there's a lot of money in this one here. This is granite all the way around with the burials on the inside. Two steps leading up. Uh, Mary, wife of Daniel Howell. So the Howell family. Died 1873. This is one of the earlier plots here, it looks like. And as I kind of lower down and frame this up, it would make another great photo, but just to kind of show you how I see things, that's how I would line it up and snap a photo of the hollow plot okay bring it back down to the road here because we're going to come upon our second stone culvert which i think is the larger of the two i need to find a safe path down here now there is something i may or may not do i'll explain in just a moment after i show you the culvert something i wanted to do in the past and we'll see if we could accomplish it today. This is the K section known as Pine Hill. And they go all up in this area. And that's why I, I, not to be repetitive, but it is a very large sprawling cemetery. And this is like, um, it's almost overwhelming to be honest. I've never been down this part before. You know what, let's, worry about that and in just a second I want to show you the culvert here this one is large uh, I'm going to try to go on the other side here <clears throat> excuse me and give you a look at it So the unfortunate one with this one is that there is graffiti in there. I remember seeing it last time. But look at that arch though. That is amazing. Completely constructed out of stone. And this is from the 1800s, back around the beginning of the cemetery being constructed, the roadways being put in. Probably dirt roads at the time, they paved over it, but this is standing the test of time as well as the other one. But this one is large enough for like a commercial truck to go through. It's probably at least, 15 feet tall, if not higher. It's really impressive. So I'm trying to figure out a game plan here. Now, if we cross here, go to the right, it'll bring us to where the first culvert was. If we go to the left, it's gonna take us around kind of to where I started, which we're gonna to get to. But something I haven't done in the past is there's a pathway here. It's, um, it resembles a path anyways, which I don't know where that goes. I always want to see where that goes, and I've never been on this either. So I think for the sake of today's video, we want to cover this as much as possible. We're going to take a little walk and see 
where this goes and if there's something worth sharing. So nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? Okay, so I can see why there is a path here because there is headstones lining the whole entire way. I'm wondering how they even got equipment down here. This is a pretty steep, pretty steep bank side here dig a hole for a burial. As you see, it's uh, kind of protecting me here. It's a neat little area. actually a headstone right there probably 10 feet away from me wow there's even more than down here this is a type of wall here constructed out of stone and these may or may not be markers or like a plot line or something a plot marker the path continues and there's yeah this is lined with markers or Types of stones, headstones. There's actually steps here. And wow, these are completely buried. And a really large tree hiding right there. That is, I would say, at least four feet in diameter. Off the left side here is a steep embankment, which is where the water flows through, and there's a stone wall there. And up over on the other side is some headstones. So that's like a ravine for water. But this is so thick and overgrown, it's, it's like it hasn't been touched in years. Yeah, look at this. A little staircase here. I have to walk over that tree. Stairs going up to really buried burial sites no pun intended brightly colored yellow tree there I'm glad I took this path I mean we get to see something unique and different and look at people have carved into the tree here this must be a popular area for kids to either hang out or explore or party or whatever they're doing Okay, so now I know where this goes. This brings you out to the other culvert. So that is the first culvert I showed you right there. We were standing right over there. That's the road we walked up, went around. So it's just a connecting trail. So we're gonna return. I'm not gonna keep the camera rolling because we've just been down here. Once we get back up to the road, we're gonna cross the other side and continue in that direction. So I'll see you over there. Just made it back up the pathway. We're gonna cross over the road and take this road and see what's back here. This area is much more green and lush. Still a lot of things that uh, haven't dropped their leaves yet or changed color. Ferns, branches, bushes. This looks like the end of it here. Property continues over, there's a fence line there. A pathway looks like it may continue. Maybe this is not the end. 
I see something on the ground here. What is this? These are back here all by themselves. Nanny E. Culver, 1860 to 69. Oh, only nine years old. James Culver, 1857 to 79. That almost looks like, like an above ground crypt. I don't think it is, it looks like it's solid, but it has the shape of like one of those vaults or crypts. I'm sorry, not a crypt, uh, the shape of a vault or a casket. These are out here all by themselves though. There's nothing else around it. This is just kind of forest area. The property fence is up there and that's where the main cemetery is. So this is a new discovery, another one as to why it's back here all by itself. And I'm wondering, you know, and I don't want to assume anything, but you know, they're just laying down here. This one should be standing up. So I'm wondering if these were placed here out of the way on purpose or if this is a true burial site. What do you guys think? I'm kind of perplexed on that one. I want to say this is a burial site, just kind of private for them, but I figured that would be standing up and it would be kind of looking a little different than what it does. So this pathway, if I'm not mistaken, goes through and comes out somewhere on a different part of the cemetery but i want to take you guys out back to the main road because there is some more things to share but we don't have too much further to go so if you have made it this far i do want to thank you for staying tuned and watching this is my first time ever doing a full walking tour like this and although i have been having to cut the video here and there i've been doing my best to keep it raw and real and just show and share what it's like to be here for yourself, whether you enjoy cemeteries or just wanted something different to watch or to see um, what it looks like this time of year. Regardless of your reason, I'm glad to have you here. I'm gonna cross over the large culvert and off to our left here in the corner is the next thing I wanna share with you, which I mentioned earlier, that is the horse hitch, which was used for tying the reins of the horses. Yeah, right there. Now, I've seen them in the past, never knew what they were for. It wasn't until the caretaker woman, who uh, was super friendly and knowledgeable, shared that information with me. I've seen, that, uh, seen them at other cemeteries and even in the town of Jim Thorpe, I've seen them too along the sidewalks. So if we were to walk that direction, it would take us back to the other culvert. And up here, it's a uphill slope, pretty well taken care of. We're gonna go around this way though, to the far back side of it. It's really, really quiet back here. So I'm gonna give you guys just a moment of silence We're now presented with two more mausoleums, which these ones are different from the others as they're kind of built into the 
embankment here. <clears throat> Excuse me, this one is Lucas. It's really weathered and hard to make out, but it's L-U-C-A-S. This one is sealed up. Possibly no surviving members of the family, but this goes into the side of the hill here. And this one, which is not looking too good a condition, it's almost like it's barely hanging on. This is Barnes. And it has a little chapel-like design to it. A lot of the mortar is eroded. And as you can see here, this is breaking away like that. And at some point it's gonna require some work to be done to keep it stable and secure. <coughs> Excuse me. Looking up the hill here, we got the sun shining through grounds really covered in a lot of leaves. Nothing really right here to see, but I'm gonna keep you guys rolling, keep you with me here. And then we'll get up to around the corner, which there should be some more burials there. But the pathway that I mentioned earlier, when we found um, that isolated headstone, which I was questioning if that was actually a burial or not. That pathway I said that continues, comes out somewhere back in here. So that would have brought us here. Now, a couple of facts I could point out to you, if you ever want to come here for yourself or thinking about visiting a cemetery for yourself, just for leisure. Typically, unless it's posted or noted on a website, they are very friendly with people coming here walking, whether you're walking with yourself, loved one, walking your dog. As we've seen, there's been plenty of dogs here, plenty of people walking around, but you wanna be respectful. If you have a dog, bring your waste bag to clean up after it. Um, if you do find caretakers, I mean, give them their space to do their job, but also if you have questions, most times they're happy to answer any questions you do have. And a lot of them are full of great knowledge because they know the cemetery better than anyone else. <clears throat> and lastly, this one in particular does not get maintained in the winter time. They will plow a path just up a short distance past their, the caretaker's home, but this is not fully maintained in the winter time. So if you were to come through here, these roads, especially these far back ones, most likely would not be clear. There's a chance you could get stuck and it's gonna turn into a headache. So depending on the time of year you come, just be mindful that you may not wanna go at that particular time. That's a beautiful scene right there. There's a slight breeze coming through and it's knocking the loose leaves off and they're just floating down to the ground. Now over on the other side is another cemetery. If I'm not mistaken, that might be Dunmore Cemetery, which I did a video on a couple years ago, but those two do adjoin with a fence line there. another nice stretch of road here a lot of tall trees along the sides and a lot of cleared areas here so you could very easily see all the headstones now there is i think one or two more i do want to share with you before we wrap things up because we are essentially back where we started and easily walked over a mile today but if you were to truly walk this entire place with all the different roads, pathways, you could walk a few miles and spend quite a few hours here covering each and every square inch of this place. It is uh, really large, really expansive, and really incredibly beautiful. I 
All right, what I'm gonna do, because this is gonna take me a long way, I'm going to retreat my steps and head directly to the next area I wanna share with you. All right, this one final mausoleum I wanna share with you, which in the past is made for some incredible photos, but I just love the look of it. It has some columns on it and even some nature growing on it as well. Get out of the sunlight here. This is Dean, D-E-A-N. And this looks hauntingly beautiful is the best way to describe it. It is sealed up, as mentioned, has the two columns. There's some foliage, or uh, I guess you want to even call that a tree growing out of the top of the roof there. This one is weathered. It's got some discoloration to it. And it's really nice. Even the window sealed up. Wow, that is completely sealed. They bricked it up and put mortar over it. Even some ferns growing out of it too. But what I'm going to do for you guys is take one final photo here. I'm going to line it up and we'll snap a nice photo. I'm going to try to get a silhouette with the sun and get the flag in the foreground here. Right about there. Okay, everyone. So Forest Hill Cemetery, Dunmore, Pennsylvania. One of my all-time favorite cemeteries, and you can see why. There's so much to see, so much to offer, so much to take in. No matter what time of year you come, it changes. And as you saw today, we made some new discoveries. We saw that sphere tombstone, which I never knew was there. We got to find those ones in the woods that were just sitting there by themselves. We also took the pathway to find out where that goes. So it's my pleasure to do this video for you. So. If you truly made it all the way to the end, watched all the entire way through, the whole way through, I do want to thank you so much for taking your time to watch. I know this was a long video. I came into this knowing it was going to be no way around it. It just was going to be time consuming, but I had a great time. It was a beautiful day. Sun is shining through. Got to meet a few nice people who uh, were walking around, enjoying it just like I was and you were. And hopefully this gave you uh, some entertainment you know whether you're walking on a treadmill sitting on the couch laying in bed driving the car i just wanted to do something different something familiar which is a cemetery tour cemetery video but also different where you know i'm not doing a whole ton of photos even though i did do some but also kind of kept it rolling as much as i can you know minimal edits and Focus primarily on the sights and sounds. You know, I, I kept talking to a minimum. At least I hope I did. <laughs> but feedback, comments, would love to hear your thoughts. And I have other places in mind to do something similar. Uh, not only cemetery related, but other locations. Just more nature related, I guess you could say. Or I could do something similar in the future. But that's a ways away. We'll focus on one thing at a time. If you are new to the channel, I do want to thank you for stopping by to check it out. If you like this type of content and want to see what else I offer, check my playlist. I do have several of them categorized with everything from food reviews to Knoebel's Amusement Resort to Pittsburgh to Vegas to even abandoned stuff and of course cemeteries. So just explore my channel. If you like it, consider subscribing. And I do put out videos typically three times a week. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but usually it's a pretty steady schedule around 8 p.m. The videos do come out. Anyways, thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. Thanks for walking around. Hopefully your feet are not too sore. More importantly, I hope you had a good snack because now I'm hungry. I need to go eat. So take care, everyone. And like always, I'll see you in the next video.